C-SPAN, powered by cable. Washington Journal continues. Welcome back to Washington Journal. I'm joined now by Nihad Awad. He's National Executive Director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE. Nihad, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you. You co-founded uh, CARE in 1994. Tell us about your mission and how you're funded. So our mission is to enhance the understanding of Islam because we believe that Islam is misunderstood and Muslims are um, not were represented whether in the popular culture, in the media, in the educational system. There's a lot of ignorance about what Islam is and who Muslims are, although we count in the millions. Our numbers exceed now um, 8 million people. Then we have to protect the civil rights of American Muslims, whether in the workplace, in schools, in public places, in government agencies, so on and so forth. And we also believe in empowering American Muslims to encourage them to be more civically engaged, to vote, and also to run for elections themselves to serve, because service is important for us as Muslims. And also we build coalitions with like-minded organizations who believe in justice and dignity and civil rights for all. Uh, we are funded by um, the community, uh, simple supporters, uh, donors from all over the country, and also uh, the people from the larger society who believe in our vision and mission. CARE has come under criticism, Nihad, in the past for connections to Hamas. Can you clarify for us any past or current connection you have with Hamas? Zero connection. Uh, it's just guilt by association. I am a Palestinian. I'm proud to be Palestinian. We do everything by the book. The organization has been operating for 30 years, uh, 29 years to be precise, has 35 offices. We're the largest uh, uh, political and civil rights uh, organization serving not only our community, but those who need our help. Uh, so uh, this is these are just rumors, uh, guilt by association to try to taint us so that, you know, they damage our credibility, but our credibility has been growing massively with a large support even from the public. People believe in our mission and they judge our work. They don't judge rumors and she said, he said, and the government knows this very well. I'm going to put up on the screen um, the uh, information from your organization about the rise of anti-Muslim incidents across the U.S., 774 complaints, including reported bias incidents since October 7th. It's the largest number of complaints reported since December of 2015, after former President uh, Trump declared his intention for a Muslim ban. And uh, uh, Nahad, can you tell us about the, the rise in these, um, the, these incidents, of course, the the most shocking was the, the killing of the six-year-old boy in Illinois and the wounding of his mother. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I, I have been doing uh, this work for decades now. Uh, we've gone through um, the, the bombing of the Oklahoma City Federal uh, Mora Building, uh, the 9-11 uh, backlash. All of these horrible incidents there, um, I, I went through them, our community went through them. But just days after that, we saw like statesmanship. We saw that all of us as Americans, we come together. We do not allow any hatred or any violence against minorities. We did not allow that to continue. Unfortunately, since October 7th, I, I haven't seen this, the rampant Islamophobia that our community is, is facing today. The hate crimes, as you said, Wadiya al Fayumi, a six year old boy. Palestinian American boy and his mother. He was stabbed 26 times and his mother was stabbed 12 times. Wadiya died. Um, and, and that's really is due to the dehumanization of the Palestinians in particular and American Muslims and Arab Americans in this country because of the misrepresentation and the misinformation about what happened and what continues to happen in and around Gaza, in occupied the West Bank, and also in Israel. All of these things fuel the hatred and anger among uninformed people to the point that they take violent action against innocent people. So this is just one incident. 
there is a lady, 52 years old, pediatrician, was stabbed to death near her home when she was sitting on a picnic. We do not know if it was, if it was hate crime, but this puts our community on edge. That case is being investigated also by uh, the federal uh, law enforcement. Uh, people have been driving their cars into crowds uh, of rallies, and that, that's very alarming, and that's very suppressing to people's uh, uh, right to speak and to do demonstrate. Um, most of the cases, maybe, that we have been receiving are from the workplace. People are being threatened to be terminated. People have been terminated. Uh, medical uh, professionals and doctors have been terminated just for expressing sympathy with the Palestinians. Um, so I, we haven't seen really a good response from the government or public officials to reset the tone and say, no, look, we will not go to allow um, backlash against any minority, whether Jewish community or Muslim community or Palestinian community or any community. People are free to express themselves. They're entitled to their views, no matter how you may disagree with, but violence, hate crimes, uh, will not be tolerated. We haven't been hearing a lot from the public um, officials and elected officials that assuring statement to the Muslim community or even actions being taken. And I'll invite our viewers to join the conversation. Uh, Democrats, 202 748 Republicans, 202 748 Independents, 202 748 We also have a line set aside for Muslim Americans. You can call us on 202 748 and use that same line for texting. Nihad, I asked our previous uh, guest about the definition of anti-Semitism, so I'd like to ask you about your definition of Islamophobia. Islamophobia uh, can be Googled and there are uh, definitions, but the, the most common definition is the hatred and prejudice against Muslims that leads to acts of discrimination and violence because of one's identity or one's religious uh, views or uh, adherence to a particular religion, in this case, Islam. And what has been your uh, reaction to uh, President Biden's handling of this um, Israel-Hamas war? And what's your message to him? Disastrous. In one word, disastrous. The president has betrayed me as a Palestinian-American, as Muslim, as someone who personally voted for him and who's uh, heard uh, him on a Zoom call uh, assuring us that uh, all Americans are equal and he will center human rights in his policy um, and, and the Palestinians deserve uh, dignity and, and freedom and all of this fluffy talk. But what we see now, he has been adding fuel to the fire. He is not making the region stable and he's been supporting the oppressor. He's been supporting the occupier and he's dismissing and minimizing the human suffering of the Palestinians, doubting, doubting their numbers and minimizing their suffering is a form of dehumanization and has given the, the many people the green light to hate Muslims and to, to commit uh, these, these crimes that we have been seeing. He has given the green light for the Israeli government to be as brutal as the world is watching now, killing over 9,000 people, mostly civilians. The majority of these victims are babies, children. You don't have to watch CNN. You may not see this or on Fox News. Watch Al Jazeera English. Just Google it. If you have really the heart to see it, you will be horrified as the, as the world has been horrified. So the president has betrayed our trust as voters. And let me say also that he has betrayed the American trust. He's been shipping billions of dollars, not to fix schools, not to uh, uh, you know, employ the, the unemployed, not to insure the uninsured, not to uh, help impoverished communities around our, our, our society, not to rebuild the infrastructure of this country, He's been shipping our hard-earned tax money to Israel, a foreign country. And at the same time, he's defending the Ukrainians, rightly so, against the invasion. So the, the, the dilemma for us that I cannot 
comprehend, like millions of Americans, how come you support the occupier in Palestine and you support the occupied? You know, if he flips it, reasonably speaking, he will see that the Palestinians have been at the receiving end. They are the occupied people. It is their land that has been stolen. It is them who have been living in open air prison, as President Jimmy Carter said, which is called Gaza. And Israel has been just shooting at them, bombing them mercilessly. And he continues to say Israel has to defend itself. I mean, against what? All right, let's talk to viewers. Marion is first in Grovetown, Georgia, Democrat. Good morning, Marion. Uh, good morning. I first want to say I how heartbroken I am for both the Jews that have the innocent Jews and the innocent Palestinians. I think it's just horrible how organized religion can be absolutely deadly and, and make people not be able to think. But my question is this, and I'll read this, and then if you don't mind, would you answer it, whether, what Netanyahu and Hamas, their relationship is? Because um, let me read this, and then would you respond? This is from the Times of Israel. For years, various governments led by Benjamin Netanyahu took an approach that divided power between the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, bringing Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas to his knees while making moves that propped up the Hamas terror group. And then I've read also that Netanyahu would let money freely go into Hamas's hands, keeping Hamas sort of in power to cause chaos so that they could use Hamas as a reason to show what victims they are. And this, I don't blame the Jews at all. I blame governments that, that use this kind of horribleness to uh, make policy. Uh, thank you very much. Yihad. Th thank you for your question and your comment. Um, First of all, uh, you said organized religion, Jews, Muslims. I don't, I, I don't really see it that way. This is not a fight between Jews and Muslims. This is uh, an occupation uh, by the Zionist movement who politicized and misinterpreted Judaism and convinced many Jews that this is their homeland. Go to Palestine and take over the land from the Palestinians, the indigenous inhabitants. Uh, from me, it is not a Muslim versus Jewish, no. I have so many people from the Jewish community work in my organization defending the Palestinian rights. There are tens of thousands of Jewish Americans. You see them today everywhere protesting and, make, and, 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 and believing that Israel is an apartheid state. Young Jewish Americans are growing more angry uh, that you know, they have been lied to about the, the idea of Israel uh, linked to Judaism. The, the, the group Natura La Carta does not believe that Israel is a legitimate state. These are Jewish, Jewish Americans and Jewish Israelis. So this is not a fight between two religions. The religions are the farthest from this conflict. It is a misuse and misinterpretation of a religion, namely Judaism, to impose certain people on other land and other people. So this is really very important to me because this is not about religion. It is about oppression of other people misinterpreting religion. And the second point. Yeah, Nihad, I was gonna ask you about the second point. Go yeah, ahead. The second point, you know, the what Israel is doing to Palestinians, this is just like divide and conquer. I do not believe that we should not give too much power for the Israeli government, successive Israeli governments to divide the Palestinians. It's an occupation. And the Palestinians are trying to defend themselves for 75 years against the oppression and against apartheid. Let's talk to Amy, who's in Marion, Indiana, a Muslim American. Hi, Amy. Hi. That's the smartest man I've ever heard talk. Everybody needs to listen to him. We all need to stop fighting. God's mad at the Zionists. He's real mad. He's gonna come put a wall. <laughs> He's real mad. Those are innocent people. <laughs> the Palestinians are innocent. They didn't do anything to anybody. <laughs> All right, Amy, let's go to a Republican in Gambrills, Maryland. Michael, good morning. Yeah, hi. Thanks for having me. Um, <clears throat> first off, I want to start off, you know, I'm, I'm a far-right Republican. 
and I support um, I support their fight because it's much like the fight that um, that Americans faced um, against King George when we gained our independence. That's what they're going through, you know, being having your land stolen and not just your land, but your dignity. You know, that's what that is. Um, I've heard of people getting kicked off their land there. It's a horrible situation uh, to live through. But I want to say that <clears throat> um, Palestine right now is facing um, something that, that Americans have been facing. Americans in Europe are under this kind of Zionist control, and the only media we get is Zionist-controlled media, Zionist-controlled banking. If we don't go along with them, they drop us off a financial cliff. All right, Michael. And Nahad, I wanted to go back to something you said before, which is that your community is on edge. What's your message to members of the Arab community and members of the Muslim community? I usually counsel uh, the community, and I now even I'm counseling myself. Look, we, we, we are a believer in God. We believe that God controls everything, but also you and I, and, and not only American Muslims, the general public, like, like Michael, like Marianne, like so many people, people started to find out that we, they have been lied to for decades. The media, the mainstream media, has done a great disservice to journalism by being one-sided all the time from the beginning of the conflict. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I started to do this work is my honest disgust with with the media, how it's been portraying the victims as victimizers, how they have been dehumanizing my faith, my people, myself, and others. And we haven't had the chance to even to express ourselves as humans. You know, look look at us. We're, we're, we speak, we talk, we have heart, we have a head, we have brain, we have eyes, we have ears. We, you know, our humanity has been taken away from us by the misinformation for decades. So for my Muslim community, I would say, look, your activism is working. Your, your speaking up is working. More Americans believe in your message. More Americans believe that American money should stay at home. American weapons should not be sh uh, shipped to Israel to bomb innocent people under the pretext of defending yourself. This is, this is, this is insane, but what you're doing is massive. Uh, the day after to, tomorrow, I'm sorry, uh, Saturday, there will be a massive uh, rally in Washington, D.C. If you are in the area, come and join. If you are in your cities, look up uh, the Muslim community or Palestinian communities' activities or the Jewish progressive uh, activists. They have been doing all marvelous jobs. We have to make sure that our voices are there because the price that we, he we get here from being dehumanized, being insulted, being discriminated against is nothing to the price that the people of Gaza and Palestine have been paying. So I thank you for your advocacy, for your courage, for your patience. And also, uh, Mimi, if I may uh, say, if you encounter any discrimination or any bias, our organization is here for you. All our services are free of charge. Just look up here. We have 35 offices nationwide. All our services are for you. You're not alone, and we are working with you. And also, you're not alone because you have so many Americans who believe in justice for all, including the Palestinians. Nihad, uh, American officials have, uh, have always said that uh, Israel has the right to defend itself. Uh, after that um, horrible attack on October 7th on uh, Israeli civilians, what do you see as the appropriate response from Israel? Uh, I think, look, um, all all these uh, clashes are horrible, and there are um, many civilians who, who, who die on both sides. And I, as a Muslim, as a Palestinian, um, I'm against the hurting of any human being, especially civilians. However, our politicians are misleading us, misleading the public. The occupier, according to international law, the occupier does not have the right to self-defense if they're occupying other people. The occupied people, in accordance with international law, have the right to defend themselves, have the right to de defend themselves. So this total allegiance to Israel, 
at the expense of our values as Americans, as universal human beings, as people who believe in international law and the rule of law. This is, this is really a stain on, on the reputation of America and politicians. You know, if I may speak to, to, to politicians and, 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 and President Biden, look, your allegiance is to the American people, not to a foreign occupation. All right, you let's... have to stabilize national security and, and American security around the world because of your bias. The whole world is telling you, stop the madness, stop being one-sided. You, you, you support the people of Ukraine to liberate themselves, but you are not supporting the Palestinians. This double standard has to end. All right, let's talk to Deborah in Yorktown Heights, New York, Democrat. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for taking my call and thank you for taking the time to be here. Um, there are so many points that you've mentioned that I really uh, was touched by and agree with. And um, uh, I'm a, a psychologist by training. And so I'm uh, watching this crisis unfold and I'm aware of the, the trauma that uh, is occurring directly to so many uh, humans and then vicariously to all of us who are on the sidelines, really just watching and feeling very helpless. And so that causes so much dysregulation and emotional um, activation. And our, you know, our, our trauma systems are really activated, which makes us all think in very black and white terms. You know, we start um, categorizing as a way of kind of coping with our own feelings. So my question is, um, you know, due to the complexity of all of these um, matters which have been going on for millennia, what can we do at this point in history to come together, you know, with organizations like yours, but to really come together and get the attention of the media and have individuals like those callers on C-SPAN be able to participate in a dialogue that is solution-oriented and that can clarify misinformation and um, use experts like yourself to really help us understand the complexity of it um, but also, you know, maintain that kind of humanistic outlook that n nobody really wants oppression, right? So um, I'll be interested in hearing any solutions that you're aware of or any groups locally that can get the attention of the media to help solve some of these issues. All Thank right, Deborah. So Excellent points. Thank you so much for, for your uh, kind remarks and your thoughtful comment. Um, look, the root cause of this is the occupation. You cannot feel superior to other people, and that should not qualify you to dehumanize other people and take their lands from them uh, and drive them forcibly, discriminate against them, uh, and just try to depopulate any land just because you have an interpretation of who you are or misperception of yourself to qualify you and, 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 and enable you and, and give you the right to do what you do to other people. We have to resolve this mentality. And unless Americans believe that the American government should change course, this will not be resolved. The only main supporter of the state of Israel is the United States. And, and Nahad, that... I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop you right there because we're out of time. Nahad Awad is the executive director of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Here's the House just gaveling in.